this amazing piece of instrument is nothing but a thermoval. Now, thermoval has one very important length which stands from the end of the flange and ends at the tip of the thermoval. This length is basically called as U length. But did you ever thought why is it not called as M length for example or N length? Why is, is there a specific reason we call it U length? The answer to it is yes. The U stands for unsupported length of the thermoval. Now let us look at how to calculate this amazing length. First thing to know is inside in a pipe how a thermoval is actually installed. So here's your pipe, here's your nozzle and the thermoval is inserted here with the help of gasket. This entire assembly has to be in place so we put bolts together with studs so that the entire assembly is in place. Now to calculate U length you need to know two amazing criteria, which is the immersion length and the nozzle standout. These are very important. Will you agree with this statement if I tell you that U length of a thermoval is simple words nothing but the nozzle standout plus the immersion length? Let us put this to the test. So for example, we have our current thermoval which was installed and we will try to get to know the first the entire U length. So this starting from the end of the flange up to the tip of the thermoval, this is your U length and this can be called as nozzle standout, right? Nozzle standout plus how much is it immersed inside the process or from the starting of the pipe up till the tip of the thermoval, this can be called as immersion length. So if we know both these things, we can very easily calculate U length. So now let us look at how to calculate this. So for the first thing, I would love to ask a question that do all nozzles in the project have the same standout? If that would have been the case, it would have been very easy. But the answer to it is no. Why? Let us look at that example. So imagine the challenge here is that the normal standout which is typically around 150 mm or 200 mm in usual projects and in these standouts we need a minimum clearance for the thermovals to be removed properly right from removing the bolts, studs etc. So this clearance space should be around you could say 100 mm here. But if you see even if it is 150 mm we are getting more than 100 mm clearance space right. So then what is the challenge here the challenge is when you have insulated lines so when you put insulation here the clearance space will reduce drastically so you might have to sometimes even cut through the insulation to actually remove the thermoval this is very hazardous right and nobody would want to waste their insulation so in this case what is the possible solutions let us look into that case. So we'll share three cases. The first case is normal case. Here the insulation is 0 mm. So we can have our maybe standard. Let us assume it to be standard to be 150 mm. So you can keep the standard length. Now for the insulation case 1, the insulation is basically less than 50 mm. So you have a line which is insulated. But because the insulation is less than 50 mm, so even if the max 50 mm is used, 150 minus 50 is still 100 mm. So you're able to get a clearance of 100 mm. But in insulation case 2, the insulation is actually greater than 50 mm. Here your standout has to be the insulation length plus 100 mm of clearance. This has to be your minimum standout. Let us calculate one case. So for example, your insulation is 100 mm and your minimum standout then has to be 100 mm which was the insulation plus 100 mm clearance. So minimum standout should at least be 200 mm. This is what the nozzle standout has to be calculated. So we can say in very simple words for standout. First thing you need to know is what is the standard standout for a two inch nozzle or one and a half inch nozzle that you will be using for a thermoval. Maybe it could be 150 mm or 200 mm usually. Then second is to calculate how much is the insulation length. Is it 50 mm, less than 50 mm, 100 mm, etc. And then how much clearance space do you want? Do you want it? Usually it is around 100 mm for example, but you could choose the thumb rule. Is it 100 mm, 50 mm, how much you want it. Once this is done, then your standout is very clear. You could use an Excel to basically do it when it's for multiple cases. Now, let us look at the next amazing case, which was immersion length. Now for immersion length, it is this length, which is from the edge of the pipe up till the tip of the thermoval. So this length is called as your immersion length here. This immersion length now has a lot of criteria depending on the standards that you're using, client preferences, etc. We look at some very common or well-known standards and recommendation. So let us go for APARP 551. Here in the section 4 and page number 25, it says that the minimum immersion length should be 2 inches, which is around 50 mm you could say. So at least it should be 50 mm within the process if the line is completely filled. Now this is very important criteria, but is it the only criteria? The answer to it is no. 
Another amazing criteria that I've seen a lot of well-renowned companies use is PIP standards. So PCFTE 100 has a very good table. So this table basically is about the line size and the U-length, which includes the standout here, nozzle standout. But if it changes, you will have to modify the U-length accordingly. But as an average thumb rule, you can say that for a 6 to 8 inch line, they say the U-length could be around 7 inches. For any line which is greater than 8 inches, it could be around 10 inches. I have not taken the entire table. The table has for elbows, for an equipment mounted, how much U-length has to be kept. So you can use this standard, which is very amazing. Finally, certain clients have their own preferences. For example, the U-length is, they say, to be one third of the pipe. So if you have a 24 inch line into one third of pipe, it is going to be 8 inches. So basically the client wants that it should go around till 8 inches. So you have to depend upon what criteria do you use for immersion. Finally, let us try to actually calculate and see the case. So for example, for an actual case, here's my thermoval put assembly put together. My insulation is 140 mm. So my standout I've kept as 250 mm. Why? Because I would want a clearance of around 100 mm. So going to the next standard number from 200 is 250 mm. So my standout is 250 mm. Now what I need to do is after I've got a clearance of 100 mm, what will be my immersion length? So let us maybe choose the API criteria here. So the API RP said the minimum immersion length should be 2 inches, right? 50 mm. So here we'll keep this as 50 mm. So my final U-length calculation is going to be 250 mm, which is the nozzle standout plus 50 mm which is my immersion length so my total u length comes out to be 300 mm so this is how you can use an excel once you're clear with the concept and calculate u length for all the thermovals that have to be used in the plant and then remember one thing they have to go through the wake frequency calculations and maybe the lens or the tip thickness etc would get modified for a very few cases but majority of them usually pass so this is your basic criteria now if you're enjoying this video i think you would love this video basically which talks about how to install a thermoval in an elbow to prevent wake frequency calculations and how can you actually prevent and what to do when your thermoval fails in wake frequency calculations so i think you would love this video if yes please subscribe and let us meet next saturday thank you and have a great day ahead